Picture this, you've just made a huge effort to sit down and plan out your goals for the new year. I'm talking a full on focus session. You're in a quiet place, away from your kiddos, and maybe you've even got a fresh cup of coffee in hand. And you've even got a brand new shiny notebook and fresh pack of your favorite pens. You've set your goals, you've planned your year, and now you are ready to go get them and make it happen. But then the new year actually starts and you're instantly getting swept up in life happening all around you. Kids are going back to school, you're trying to find your groove at work again, and all you wanna do is just recover with a cheesy rom-com binge session. And suddenly you've forgotten all about your New Year's resolutions until someone brings them up on a random Tuesday in March. Sound familiar? Well, friend, you aren't alone. In fact, most people give up on or just plain forget about their New Year's resolutions by January 17th, which is just a little over two weeks into the new year. But why? Why is it so common for us to do this? Why do we give up so quickly? Well, in this video, we're going to cover just that. We'll talk about the number one reason why most people give up on New Year's resolutions so quickly. You'll hear about why you don't need to be a planner or consider yourself super organized to effectively work toward your goals. And I'll share three ways to get back at it and keep making progress. Because honestly, any time is a good time to start, even if it's in the middle of the year. And before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my new videos. I wanna go ahead and get right into it because I know this is probably fresh for many of you. As of today's air date, we are in week three of 2023. But I do wanna mention that no matter when this video finds you, you can still take away some great key points today and apply them at any time. If you're trying to set and reach goals, no matter when they may be, then this video is for you. So what is that reason? Why do we give up so quickly? You probably won't be shocked by this, but it's often because we don't have a plan. We sit down, we make the resolutions, and then that long aspirational list is just sitting there collecting dust in our planners. But here's the thing. A goal is just another thing on a list if you don't have a plan for how to start it, maintain it, and cross that finish line. I totally know that sometimes just getting the goal written down takes a lot of work, but we can't just assume all the work stops there. When you don't plan, you're just kind of leaving things up to chance. But have you ever heard the phrase, dreams don't work unless you do? I get it. I know that sounds so cheesy, like it belongs on the wall in the high school locker room, but it's a cliche because it's true. And if you're sitting there like, yeah, yeah, you're a time management coach, of course you'd say that. I want you to know that it wasn't always this way for me. I had to learn how to set better goals and create an actual plan to follow through and stick to them. A few years ago, I did the same thing that so many people do. I sat down before the new year and I did all the goal setting exercises in my favorite goal setting workbook. Then I created a lovely checklist for January of all the new habits and things that I would make progress on in order to reach my goals. But then when I got to the end of the month, I looked at my checklist and hardly anything had been checked off. I was really confused. I was super discouraged. I had done the work. I set the goals. I made the checklist, but there was no plan in place or actual system for following through with the goals I had set. So once I wised up, here's what I did differently. I took a look at my goal list and those weekly and daily habits that I wanted to start and stick to. Then for each thing on my list, I asked myself these three questions. How, what, and when? How will I follow through with this thing on my list? What do I need to be successful? And when will I do the thing? Asking those three questions for each goal on my list enabled me to get super specific about how and when I would follow through and what I needed to be successful. So if I can do it, hopefully you'll see that you can do it too. 
but being specific isn't the only thing that'll help you get right back on the goal wagon. So let's jump into those three ways to get back on track that I mentioned earlier. Number one, give yourself some grace. If you're human, you're going to make mistakes and that's okay, but don't let it keep you down. Something I learned from one of my girl's favorite TV shows, ever heard of Bluey, anyone? Mum's advice to Bingo when she was having a hard time was, have a good cry, stand up, dust yourself off, and get back to it. Number two, figure out what's a priority. Rome was not built in a day and neither is that thing that you're working towards. And I have to remind myself of that all the time. It's totally unrealistic to think that you can do it all right then and there. This is where setting SMART goals come in handy. Making sure that what you're working toward is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Break your goal down into smaller, more bite-sized pieces and pick one thing to knock out at a time as you're working toward that overarching goal. Little steps really do lead up to the big moments. And number three, put it in your calendar. Treat working toward your goal like a doctor's appointment or a deadline for work. Intentionally setting aside time to work on your goals is more important than you think. If it's not visible to you, you're probably going to forget about it as life happens. And stick to those plans. Listen, you're never going to get there if you don't start treating the work toward your goals as a priority. I know at first this may seem a little out of place for you or even uncomfortable, but remember, we don't grow unless we experience a little bit of that discomfort. Even flowers have to push through dirt before they can bloom. Every day won't be perfect, but as long as you stay at it, you'll find out that you're more capable than you think. And if you want some accountability while you're at it, come join me inside the It's About Time Academy. What we discussed today is great, but there isn't one right answer regarding time management or carving out the time to work on those big goals. Until you get crystal clear on what matters most to you and why this goal is important, you can't really start the planning process effectively. So in the academy, I teach you things like how to set yourself up for success week after week, how to use your dreams and big ideas to create your vision for the future, how to prioritize and plan your day without feeling overwhelmed, and how to live with more intention and end each day feeling accomplished. If any of that sounds like something you need, head over to AnnaDCornick.com forward slash academy to learn more. And you'll also find the link down below in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. All right, I'll see you then.